funny because I always love old records. So there's something with the Beatles, the Stones, Waylon Jennings, whatever it is. I always love the sound of old records, and I love the sound of everybody in one room together. And it's very seldom that records are made that way anymore. Hey, I'm Dave Cobb. We're at uh, Historic RCA Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. Being in this business, it's, it's such a long journey. I, I figured I, I needed to go to California, so I went to LA for about 11 years, and I wound up producing a country record, kind of by accident. This guy Shooter Jennings, and the record did pretty good. And through that, it led to working with Jamie Johnson, and I kept taking trips to Nashville, and eventually kind of made my way here. I don't think there's anywhere else in the world that art meets commerce like Nashville. I mean, there's more bands, there's more incredible musicians, there's more going on than any place I've ever lived. My heaven is being around a bunch of kind of common-minded people that, you know, want to experiment and change and, and, and do things, and this is the right place for me now. I had been in the studio a few times before. We did uh, Chris Stapleton Traveler in this room. We had a, you know, Three or about three weeks booked, I think, but we probably finished the record in about half of that time. But we just goofed off in here and really enjoyed ourselves, and that's when it started to feel like home. I, I mean, the gear is it's super important because it inspires me to come in and play around with something new and get excited, and and I think that excitement translates to the room, the other players and singers. I remember hearing a Spectre Sonics probably like you know. 12, 15 years ago and not really understanding it. Uh, I heard it again a couple years ago and uh, a buddy of mine, Mark Neal, kept talking about Spectrosonic, Spectrosonic, Spectrosonic. So finally I heard, you know, a 610 compressor. And once I was shown how to use it, it's probably the ultimate compressor of all time. It's just something about those things. They operate different than any other compressor, but they sound like records, you know? A lot of times we use it as a parallel for something. Sometimes we'll use no compression on an album, and we use the Spectrosonics as a parallel, and we might drive it and kind of distort it and blend it in, and it just sounds, for lack of a better term, it sounds a little tapey or something. It just it has this really rich harmonic thing to it. And then the other way we use it is we barely touch it. So the needle's not even moving at all. You may see a light blinking, and that peak limiting function, it somehow makes the thing sound perceivably way louder without sounding obviously compressed. So. I feel like we're going through a huge revival of new gear living up to all the lure of the vintage stuff and Spectre is one of those pieces. Yeah.